So, Merrick DeVille is one of those feminists who claims to care about men's issues. She's associated with Vouch and Shoe on Head, and I've seen her turn up on some debate panels about men's issues, mainly from a feminist perspective. Her main aim seems to be trying to make sure that people stay on her team rather than going off to the men's rights movement or something similar. But she's very doctrinaire, you know, very feminist, very, very patriarchy, very, very toxic masculinity. And this is a very short video called A Movement Concerning Men's Rights. Hi, and welcome to Merrick for America. I want to talk a little bit today about an ideology that I think is misunderstood, faced with a lot of hostility, and judged kind of unfairly by the most extreme outliers. It concerns itself with men's rights and with how men suffer in our society. Feminism. That's what it's going to be. It's going to be feminism. Yeah, that's her whole thing, right? Feminism helps men too. And that's her core motivation, to get people to identify as feminists. So pretty clearly this is an attempt at a comedic bait and switch, where she's implying that it's actually going to be a movement that helps men, but then it turns out to be feminism. And there won't be any examples for any benefits it does for men. It talks about things like how high the male suicide rate is. You know, this might be a good place to lay out some differences between men's rights policies and feminist policies. So we know some contributing facts towards high rates of suicide. Uh, custody disputes is one. Being accused of a crime is another, and there's a big overlap between those two things, thanks to family court systems. Being accused of murder, for example, has about a 10% death rate before trial, mainly from suicide. For rape, that's about 7 or 8%, but there are a lot more people accused of rape than murder. So a men's rights approach would be to look at those issues and come up with solutions. A feminist approach is to say, we care about men, and it's very sad how many suicides there are. It talks about how a lot of homeless people are men. When the number is over 80%, I'd say a lot is something of an understatement. And again, a men's rights policy would be to actually do something about this, especially to remove gender-segregated shelters, which generally provide greater shelter for women than for men. How family courts almost always just give custody of children to their mothers, even if they're not the ideal candidate for taking care of their kids. Well, it was the early feminist movement that introduced the Tender Years Doctrine, which first established this uh, tradition of giving mothers custody. And right now it's mainly feminists lobbying to keep that in place. Recently, of course, the, the National Organization for Women in America teamed up with Ron DeSantis to veto shared parenting legislation. And good luck ever finding a feminist organization that's willing to do activism in favor of shared parenting. Workplace accidents tend to be men. Have you ever heard of a feminist talk about workplace accidents before? Have you ever heard of a feminist putting forward a program to get men into better jobs so that there's less of that going on? Or to a counterpart to programs to get women into STEM? Not just to get men into other jobs that are traditionally feminine, but to get women into dangerous roles. Because I've certainly never encountered that, and I've been looking for a very long time. Men not being able to express their emotions properly and healthily, how that's terrible for them. I object to this being framed as men not being capable of doing something. Men are perfectly capable of this, it's just they are subject to Pavlovian conditioning. When you, when you come out of, with your emotions and every single time it gets a negative reaction, then you stop doing it. It's not that men are not able, it's that men are not permitted. But this is a feminist talking. Merrick Deville is a feminist, so she has to place the blame on the men themselves, and not onto anything the feminist movement might have done. Men are given harsher criminal sentencing. This is true, but criminal sentencing doesn't happen in a vacuum. The idea that men are more violent and more dangerous and will pose more of a threat is one which is tacitly supported by feminism at every turn. But more importantly, feminists regularly do activism specifically to prevent women from getting custodial sentences after criminal conviction. In this country there has even been talk, even at the highest levels of government, about abolishing women's prisons altogether. So, 
If Merrick thinks that feminism talks about, about these issues, then where are the feminist projects to get men convicted of domestic homicide shorter sentences, as there are for women, or to get minor male criminals non-custodial sentences, or even to abolish prisons altogether? Well, the answer is simply that they don't exist, of course. In fact, feminist activism focuses more on things like banning catcalling or leering, things which put even greater policing onto the bodies and behaviour of innocent men, with a commensurate rise in likely rates of incarceration. They aren't taken seriously in terms of domestic violence, in terms of sexual assault. Well, it's not MRAs running domestic violence shelters and making sure that they stay segregated or realistically provided for women only. It's not men's rights activists writing rape laws and rape definitions to make sure that they don't include the victims of female perpetrators or sometimes any male victims at all. And it's not the patriarchy either. It is specific named feminists like Mary Koss, for example, who helped write the FBI definition of rape specifically so that it would exclude male victims of women. And who has said that a man raped by a woman is not a victim of rape, but merely of unwanted touching. It was her that did that, and it was other feminists who gave her the power to be able to do that. Men don't feel comfortable talking about if they're violated, and there are just jokes made about rape in prison. It's not fair. So those are the issues that she brings up. You ever notice how feminists, no matter how much they claim to be in favour of men's rights issues, never ever bring up education? That's a pretty uncomfortable one for them to talk about, and it's maybe the biggest issue of them all. And if you think that I'm about to say MRAs, I'm talking about feminism. And yeah, there it is. Uh. Yeah, feminists always claim they care about men's issues. Right up to the point when you get talking about specific issues, or specific policy changes, or bits of activism they might be able to do. Then suddenly the tune changes a little bit. It's like Elon Musk, who invented the Boring Company, specifically to fight against public transport infrastructure. He went to the politicians and said, Don't waste money on all that government-run transport stuff. We're going to build this transport for the future. And of course it never happened, because the whole point was just to stop something happening. Well, when feminists start talking about men's rights issues, it's exactly the same dynamic. They don't really care, they never actually want to talk about specific issues or activism or anything. All they want to do is make sure that you don't start to become an MRA. Feminism is the movement that concerns itself with all these issues. There's this idea of the feminist as a white woman with dyed blue armpits screeching who is a misandrist and hates men and just tweets men are trash every day, but so many of us are not that stereotype. That's the extreme outlier who gets all the attention. You ever notice how extreme environmentalists don't want to burn down the rainforest? Of course not, right? Because they're extremely environmentalist. You ever notice how extremist feminists don't want extreme equality? Well, of course not, because feminism isn't about equality. But I don't think anyone's judging the feminist movement by those, let's say, extremists. You don't have to. You can judge the feminist movement by Mary Koss, by the National Organization for Women by UN women, by Hillary Clinton, by the people who appointed Amber Heard to be a spokesman for the ACLU, or an ambassador for UN women. In other words, the most powerful, mainstream establishment feminists of all. Not any sort of crazy extremist, but the crazy mainstream. But so many feminists want equality. So many feminists are concerned with how patriarchy hurts trans people, non-binary people, and men. Yeah, for feminists, men are always last on the list, aren't they? But patriarchy. The feminist definition for that is always a system that's set up by men and benefits men. So, they can't really be victims of patriarchy. And, of course, it, f it firmly places the blame on the men that she claims to care about. 
Victim blaming. It's a favorite feminist pastime. Men suffer under patriarchy just like everyone else does. They're not allowed to be anything but tough. They have to be manly. Whatever that even means. There's these toxic ideals that are pushed on them. And they suffer just like everyone else. Feminism isn't about female supremacy. It concerns itself with things like domestic violence shelters for men and trying to find ways to bring down the male suicide rates. Does it though? I mean, what does Merrick Deville think is happening at those domestic violence shelters? Does she think that the feminists are desperately trying to open the door to male victims? And the patriarchy is just there blocking the door, stopping those men from getting the help they need. Because that's not what's happening. What's happening is feminists refusing to provide that help. Every domestic violence shelter in the Western world is run by feminists. And virtually none of them offer any help at all to men. And the only time I've seen any feminists of significance complaining about that was when women aids was which was was when women's aid were complaining about changes to funding that would require some gender neutral provision in just a few shelters. In other words, to require just the tiniest little bit of help to be given to men. That's what they were complaining about. Who are Merrick Deville fans? Do they really fall for this stuff? Feminism is about equality for everybody. I don't know who needs to hear this, and I don't know if any men who even feel that this isn't the case are ever going to see this, but... I saw it, and I heard it, and I wasn't very convinced. Because I've heard it all before. I've heard it a hundred times. What I haven't heard is any actual substance. Any feminists actually trying to resolve these issues. Any of the issues that Merrick Deville claims that she cares about. She won't even suggest remedies herself in her own video. She just wants to blame the patriarchy. That's all she's got. It's just a misunderstanding that I've been seeing for a long time and just something I wanted to clarify real quickly. So yeah, the movement concerning men's rights was feminism all along. And there was not a single example of any feminist actually doing anything or even really saying anything in support of men's rights throughout the entire video. In fact, beyond listing a few issues, all that was really here was an attempt to blame the patriarchy. So, just a standard defense of feminism really, with no substance of any kind. 